Hi everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today. I wanted to walk us through something that's not very sexy, but is very important foundationally for uh, floral art and floral design, and that is the type of tools we will be using to cut. So many of us very likely only have a pair of you know, scissors in your junk drawer or uh, just a pair of clippers lying around the house. And I would not necessarily recommend relying on them too often. If you're serious about picking this up as a hobby and wanna really pursue floral design, I highly recommend you invest in uh, more design-focused tools. And one of the reasons that we don't wanna use scissors is because Oftentimes the blades are very dull and it's gonna be really important for the health of our flower if we get a nice clean cut. We wanna cut them with sharp implements because that won't bruise the vessels that will be carrying water. Everything, you know, when you're floral designing, you wanna think about the health of your flower, what's gonna make them the happiest, what's gonna help them uh, stay fresh for longest. So one of the very first steps before you even start thinking about a design is making sure you're using the correct tools. So again, in a pinch, your scissors will work, but I wanted to walk us through just a couple of different options, um, a couple of different instruments that are meant for different applications as well when you're designing flowers. So I highly recommend you invest in just a pair of shears and Shears are typically spring-loaded, which makes them really gentle on your wrists. After a while, if you're doing this for a number of years, uh, you can develop some really gnarly um, pain in your wrists. So I recommend a lightweight type of shears. These are great because they have a very sharp and pointy um, nose. So that allows you to get into small places and be a little bit more precise with your cutting. These are Sabaten. They're a Japanese brand. Um, I love them, again, because they're lightweight and they have a bright color, which means I won't lose them. Because oftentimes I'll set them down on a table and leaves will start piling up, flowers, clippings, and um, oftentimes I misplace my clippers. So if you're like me, I recommend investing in a pair that's nice and bright so you can spot it easily. Um, so I love these. I also wanted to show us um, another type of clipper. This is called a pruner. And the difference between this and the shears is that the pruners are a little bit more heavy duty. You can even tell just by looking at them. They're heavier, they're more sturdy, um, and the blade has this curve. It's got this kind of half moon type of shape to it. And that is really good when we're working with thicker stems, so branches, something that you really need to get a lot of heft behind. Um, and these are um, Falcos. This is florist trade secret. Um, everybody loves Falcos. Every florist I know uh, owns a pair of these. They're fantastic. They're around $40, so they are an investment, but when I tell you they last forever, I mean it. And you can totally, as your tools age, you can get them sharpened. You can sharpen them yourself. Um, I have a knife guy, which I never thought I would say, but um, it comes in handy. And just to give you guys a quick demo, I know this is pretty basic, but um, when you're cutting, again, I'm just gonna use these shears and show you how nice and easy that was. So nice clean cut uh, versus the scissors. It's, see, it's just a little more, requires a little bit more force and I can't even just tell it's kind of uh, ragged and rough and not as clean. Um, for the pruners, I just wanted to demonstrate um, on something that has a bit of a woodier stem. So the rose would have what I would consider more of a fleshy stem. It's a little bit um, more flexible, it's pliable, it's soft to the touch. And something with a woody stem is literally wood. You can tell at it, you can just tell by looking at it that it came from a tree, it's wood, and that's when these guys are gonna make that so easy. I mean, you try doing that with a pair of scissors and you're really gonna hurt yourself. And the last tool I wanted to show us today is a Swiss Army knife. Now, every florist I admire, um, every tutorial I've watched for them, every video lesson that they've shared, all the top florists use um, a Swiss Army knife. And I was like, I wanna do that. I wanna be a top florist. How can I uh, you know, learn how to do this? So I ordered a Swiss Army knife and I cut myself within the first two minutes. 
literally just opening it, I cut myself. Um, so this is something I would recommend if you are, you know, a lot more careful than I am, or are interested in picking up a tool and learning with it. So after owning this for a few months, I've gotten much more comfortable with it. I know how to open and close it. Um, and it has definitely changed everything. So again, for more advanced florists, or if you're interested in, you know, really stretching your abilities, stretching your skills, I would recommend getting, this is literally just a Swiss Army knife that I found online. Um, and the way it's used is essentially you just use it to cut as if it were a pair of clippers, you know, just at an angle towards yourself. It's a little scary at first, but you gotta get a little oomph behind it. <laughs> Maybe you should save your branches for the pruners. Um, so that being said, this is a, a really great, um, very brief intro to tools that you can use and how to develop as a floral designer and strengthen your skills uh, beyond design before you even think about what it's gonna look like. So thanks so much.